Now, while we still await word on what exactly will happen to Indiana head coach Kelvin Sampson, the obvious question on the minds of Indiana fans is if Kelvin Sampson is forced to step down, is fired, or resigns, who takes over for the rest of the year? Now, the obvious man at this choice and at this stage of the game is probably Dan Dockich, assistant head coach. And Chris, I'll throw this your way first. If indeed Coach Sampson has to step aside, is Dan Dockich, the former Hoosiers player, the right man for the job? For, for right now, it absolutely is. Dockich will, you know, step in. He's the cleanest break from Sampson. Ray McCallum has not been involved in, I think he made one, you know, impermissible call, but the, the NCAA has not focused on that. And he also was not uh, on the Oklahoma staff that made impermissible calls. He came after that and then came to Indiana with Sampson. He's an Indiana guy. McCallum would probably be a sound choice, but the fact is that Dockich is the cleanest break from Sampson, and he's an old night guy, you know, played here, shut down Michael Jordan. I mean, he's just... Uh, it's just the feeling about him would be be the best for the fans, I think. Yeah, when he was uh, when he was an assistant coach here the first time before he went to Bowling Green, there was always the kind of the feeling that he would take over for Knight once Knight retired, because he's a longtime assistant for him. Certainly knew uh, uh, Knight's way. Now the fact that he's a Knight guy doesn't, in and of itself, make him the best choice. He's an Indiana guy. He has 10 years of experience as a head coach, and he also has been squeaky clean to the point that uh, that when he had uh, an, an opportunity to take the job at. West Virginia that uh, some problems uh, that uh, were going on there in the background caused him to come back to Bowling Green and decide uh, that he didn't want to be a part of it. And I think that that is really uh, uh, says something to, to his character to go ahead and turn down that job when he had the chance at it, a Big East job, and he said, this isn't the way I'm running my program. Right. And and the thing about Dockich is that he's a real fiery guy. I mean, I, I remember one game, it might have been the Illinois game at Illinois, he just got up and he almost, I mean, he just got right in Jamarcus Ellis's face. And, you know, and that's just his coaching style. And this, what this team is going to go through is going to be really emotional. And they're going to need someone who's just going to rally them together and, and and I think Dockage's energy is, might be the thing to do that I don't know how Dockage is is an X and O's guy I don't think it matters with this team you've got DJ white you've got Eric Gordon uh, what matters is getting them to play hard and uh, and be tough And the joke that we make is that uh, Dockage needs a seat belt on the sidelines yeah. because he's always up and that's something that assistants generally do against Michigan State at one point coach Sampson even grabbed his arm and pulled him away from an official a little bit just to try to get him to settle down and Dockage smiled a little bit but he's into the game he, he is uh, with this team 100 percent and it, it seems that um, either McCallum or, or Dockage would be uh, a fine choice but Dockage is a much more likely guy. When Kelvin Sampson was first hired there weren't exactly nobody was actually thrilled about it I mean I don't think anyone was too concerned but yet there were still the rumblings of an Indiana guy I think especially after this assuming you know again that he leaves under some circumstances to put Dockage in there would kind of appease the fans maybe uh, for the rest of the season. And then that leads to the question is, what about recruiting? Ken, you spend so much of your time following the recruits that could be potentially coming to Indiana University. This speculation right now that we don't know who's going to be the coach in as soon as the next week, what effect is that going to play on recruiting as Indiana tries to remain competitive and obviously a very tough conference? It's tough because everything's on hold. I mean, it, it's that simple. Everything's on hold. Uh, now, the recruits for next year all have signed their letter of intent and so so they are uh, obligated to come to Indiana unless Indiana wants to let them out of that obligation now usually that that is the case that uh, that when there is a coaching change like this under these circumstances you know, schools tend to let people out of, out of their obligation but until anything is resolved, until Friday at the earliest, we, we just don't know because you know it's a, we're certain that uh, Coach Sampson is going to be gone. But the fact of the matter is, we don't know. Stranger things have happened. Right. I think Devin Ebanks is definitely gone if Kelvin Sampson goes. You know, he's the and he's the top player in that 2008 class, the only real marquee player. The other players are are nice role players who are going to develop into into you know capable Big Ten guys. But Ebanks was the star, and I think that his connection to Indiana was Kelvin Sampson. That's what he came and. and loved but the interesting thing about this situation now is that a lot of these mistakes you know so-called mistakes whether or not they were is I guess what the NCAA is and Indiana is trying to figure out but th they were made while Indiana was trying to catch up in recruiting because Kelvin Sampson had come here and and you know he hadn't been able to recruit you know these guys to Indiana when they were 10th grade 11th grade and that's really when you know a coach builds sort of those relationships is at an early age and starts following these kids so here's Indiana trying to call these kids as much as they can to jump in now you know to say hey I know we didn't recruit you but we weren't here we want to show you around we want to tell you what we're all about can we get it done and, and that's where a lot of these uh, you know impermissible calls came in and you know some of these recruits they didn't even know about this some of these guys were learning about the situation from writers right here in town 
And uh, to have that be the case, you know, it's really, it's really upsetting that, that that was just the way it had to happen. Right. The, way, the way everything came out and with this Blitzkrieg press conference on Wednesday, it was just, from there on, it was just kind of a zoo in this, in this city. So. DJ White, the guy has been nothing short of an excellent leader for this team, not only on the court, but in the clubhouse. We've heard Coach Calvin Sampson and many other people talk about the type of leadership that he provides. You look back at his time at Indiana, the injuries, the fact that he was here during the Mike Davis nonsense, it's pretty amazing how he's been able to keep his head on straight and really lead this team during a very difficult Big Ten season right now. Oh, and, and that's one thing that I think the team has going for it is DJ's been through this before. Yeah. You know, there, he, there's some experience there. He can provide some leadership. Uh, you know, it doesn't seem like the knee injury is, is a uh, big issue, so uh, it's, it's not going to be a long-term thing. So he's going to have to continue to be a leader. On, on the bright side, it seems that he has the maturity to do just that. Yeah, White's career here has been absolutely tragic. I mean, there's no other word for it because he came here for Mike Davis, but then had to make the tough decision to not follow Davis, and then had to adjust to Sampson. And I think all of us know now that that was a harder process than maybe either of them let on. And now DJ White has just developed into this amazing player who just dominates games and, like Ken said, was, is, is a leader of this team. And, you know, I think he's been the leader all year long because I think this has had some effect on these guys from the very beginning. You know, they knew that Kelvin was, there was some doubt around him. So yeah, he was drawing the plays and, and running the practices, but really what they were rallying around was DJ White and his experience. And now for this to happen to him, you know, I, I, I wanna see how he comes out of it, you know, because I think just he's been so amazing in dealing with it. I'm kinda anxious to see how he continues to deal with it. You know, on Saturday, uh, Jamarcus Ellis actually said in the post-game press conference that even when DJ returned to the bench, he was a leader in everyone's mind, and that was und undoubted in anyone's mind. So I don't think we have to really worry about his leadership through what could be another coaching change. Yeah. And the fans certainly made their opinion known on DJ White clear, chanting his name as he was sitting on the bench during the closing seconds of that win over Michigan State. But the fans also had an interesting Saturday. Saturday morning when ESPN game day was at Assembly Hall, each time Kelvin Sampson's image came on the Jumbotron, he was vehemently booed. Every time Bobby Knight's image came up, there was a large cheer. By the end of that 19 point win over Michigan State, the student section got Assembly Hall to chant Kelvin Sampson's name. Chris, what do you make of the quick uh, reaction changes between the Indiana fans. I think it's just a matter of uh, what could have been. You know, that's what Saturday night meant to me, was that these people, you know, in the morning they they were angry at Kelvin Sampson. They were done with Kelvin Sampson. They, they wanted the divorce. They had filed for the divorce. They were just waiting for the papers to get filled out. But then Saturday night, what happened, you know, with, with Eric Gordon playing as well as he did and the team rallying, you know, DeAndre Thomas coming out of nowhere and playing so well and uh, just these guys picking each other up, uh, I think that's what we all thought was going to happen, how this team was going to come together. And, and now, you know, for Kelvin Sampson to basically shove that aside of his own doing uh, really made the fans just think, you know, what could have been. And, and I don't know why they chanted the, the Kelvin Sampson name. They were just caught up in it. But uh, maybe sympathy. <laughs> yeah, I'd really think that it's uh, they booed the off the court issues uh, or b prior to the game and cheered the on the court uh, um, play after the game. Now, you know what people's uh, attitudes are. At least from the people that I've spoken to, it seems that they agree that winning is great, but you have to win right at Indiana, and that is uh, uh, it seems to be what what the general consensus is. There isn't a big movement all of a sudden to to save Sampson's job. Everybody appreciates the job that he did on the court. But it's the off the court stuff that ultimately he's going to pay. He's going to pay the price for. And it's safe to say that without question, that was the most focused effort of the year from the Indiana Hoosiers basketball team this year. They looked as good as they've been all year. You mentioned DeAndre Thomas finally looking like he can do something inside the paint. It was an excellent effort, certainly the loudest Assembly Hall has been, and at least for a couple of hours, Hoosier fans seemed relieved by at least the play on the court. Uh, Chris, Ken, Pat, I appreciate you guys taking some time during what's been an obviously very busy week to share your thoughts with us here on Hoosier Sports Night. We're going to take a quick time out. When we come back, we'll wrap things up on the show. Keep it right here on IUS TV. While all of us at Hoosier Sports Night have worked vigorously over the last week to get to the bottom of the Kelvin Sampson scandal, the recent tragedy at Northern Illinois University has given us all an opportunity to reflect on things much larger than sports. So it's with my true sincerity that on behalf of the Hoosier Sports Night staff here at IUS TV, I say that our thoughts, prayers, and hearts are with our good friends at Northern Illinois. Thank you for watching Hoosier Sports Night. I'm Ronan O'Shea. Have a good night.